Polynomials day two. Yesterday we looked at zeros. We looked at m maximum number of extrema. We also learned how to write equations and read them from the graph. So today we're going to build on that, do a little bit more. Okay, so you're going to find zeros and multiplicity. Now remember, we did this yesterday. Zeros are the x-intercepts, and that tells us where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, where. Now, multiplicity is a new adjective we use here in math. And it tells us how does it really interact with that x-axis, okay, how. So for instance, it can bounce off of it, it can go through it like normal, or it can flatten through it, okay, so it kind of flat, the line flattens there as it goes through. So keep those in mind because of the descriptions of how does that x-intercept interact with the x-axis. So we're going to learn that from our equation. So let's pretend I have this equation here, x plus c to the k power. That's some equation that's been factored out and doesn't matter what c is, it doesn't matter. What matters here is this number out here. Whatever power is on that factor, that will determine how the graph interacts with the x-axis, okay? If k is even, if that value right there is a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, what that tells me is that at this x value, the graph is going to bounce. It could bounce up or it could bounce down, but it's going to bounce. It's not going to actually cross the x-axis. If that k value is a 1, then it's going to go through it just like normal, everyday lines. Okay, nothing special. If that k value is odd and greater than 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, whatever, that means the graph is going to flatten at that x value. Okay, it's going to flatten out. And the higher the value, the more it flattens, right? So keep that in mind as we move along. Write these notes and learn these because you're going to be telling me multiplicity and using the word bounce, through, or flatten. So I know that you have a mental picture of what's happening there. All right, let's try this. I want to determine multiplicity. So the first thing I have to do is factor the thing completely as much as possible. So if I look at this, if I factor it out, I want to notice that I have x squareds in both of these, right? I could take an x squared out of both terms. I can also take a 2 out. In fact, I want my leading term to be positive, so I'm going to take a negative 2 out of both of these. If I do that, what's left here is x squared minus 1, right? x squared minus 1. Now, if I factor this completely, this is a difference of squares. So I have negative 2, x squared, x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now it is completely factored. Now I have to solve for zeros, find my zeros. So negative 2x squared equals 0. Divide by negative 2, it's still 0. So x is 0. But my multiplicity is the power of that x. In this case, it's a 2, which means it bounces. Where x is 2, the graph is going to bounce off the x-axis. At x plus 1, if I solve it, x is negative 1. The multiplicity here, what's the power on this factor? Well, that's imaginary 1 there, right? It's not written, or it's an understood 1, I should say. So the multiplicity is 1, which means that the graph just simply goes through x is negative 1. Okay? So I have two parts to my answer. And then this last one, x minus 1 equals 0, x equals 1. Multiplicity on this factor, that understood 1, which means it just goes through. No biggie. All right. Let's try another one. <clears throat> x squared minus 8x plus 16. All right. We'll do box method on this. x squared plus 16. So multiply to get to 16, but we have to add to get to negative 8. So it must be a negative 4 and a negative 4. So x minus 4, x minus 4. So if I factor that, now notice something. These two factors are identical. So I can write this as x minus 4 squared. And you want to do that because now you can clearly see the multiplicity. This is a multiplicity of 2. If I solve it, x x minus 4 equals 0, that means x is 4, but this power of 2 means the multiplicity is 2, 
which tells me that the graph bounces at the place where x is 4. Okay, so when you tell me multiplicity, I need you to give me the multiplicity number and the description. Bounces through or flatten. Let's try this one. 5x squared plus 15x plus 10. All right, factor it. GCF, factor it, guys. So if I take a 5 out of each term, I get x squared plus 3x plus 2, right? The 5 carries on. I'm going to factor this, box method it, multiply to 2, but they have to add to 3. So that has to be the 2 to the 1. So I get x plus 1 and x plus 2. Alrighty, solve it for x. Well, this 5 doesn't have an x in it, so it does not contain an x-intercept. I can ignore it. I don't need it for what I'm doing today. Set each factor to 0. Solve it. So this multiplicity is understood 1, which means it goes through the, the x-axis. Just easy peasy. x plus 2, solve it to negative 2. My multiplicity on this factor is, is another understood 1, which means it also goes through the x-axis. Alright, the next thing you need to learn is how to write an equation from this information. Okay, You write an equation for the polynomial that has the given zeros and the multiplicities. Determine the degree of the equation. All right, this is similar to what you did yesterday. Very similar. <clears throat> yesterday we said if we had x plus 6 you set it equal to, z I'm sorry, x plus c and equal it to 0, then x is the negative value of c, right? It's just the opposite sign. So you're going to use that today to build your factors. That's your beginning point, is building the factors just like you did yesterday. However, today you're going you're gonna to add the multiplicity aspect. Now, <clears throat> what I want to do first is just build factors based on this information. Ignore the multiplicity part, just build your factors, okay? We said that if x is 0, then that means it's x plus 0. x is negative 5, that means it's x plus 5. x is 2, it's x minus 2. Now we do the multiplicities. We just simply add the multiplicities to it. All right, if x is a, zero, a multiplicity of 2, I put a 2 there. If negative 5 has a multiplicity of 1, I put a 1 right there. And 2 has a multiplicity of 3, I put a 3 as a power. That's all you do. Then you write the equation. Y equals x squared. This is where you don't want to put that 0 in there. It just complicates things. Times x plus 5. You don't have to write the 1. And then x minus 2, the third power. Now, now what you have to do is determine the degree of the equation. Now, this is not that difficult. <clears throat> the degree of the equation is um, the highest power of the equation. All right, and the way you're going to find that is by, by figuring out what would this equation look like if it was all multiplied out. Now, I'm not asking you to multiply it all out. What I'm asking you to do is remember your power rules, your exponent rules. Um, like if I have x squared times x to the third times x to the fifth. Okay, back to those rules. They're the power rule, one of those power rules means that if they're being multiplied, all you to find that power of x, you're just going to add them straight across. Okay, so two plus three plus five gives me five plus five or ten. Okay, so the power of this guy is ten. So all I'm doing when I find my degree from my equation is I'm just going to add those powers of x's. So what I really have is x squared times x to the first times x cubed. All right, so add them up. 2 plus 1 plus 3, that is a power of 6, so my degree of 6. If you took the time to multiply all this out, you would find the highest exponent would be a 6. That's what's happening now. All right, let's try this one. Start with the equation and your factors. Okay, x, if x is negative 1, that means it's a plus 1. And then positive 6 means it's a minus 6. And 0 just means it's an x. 
add in the multiplicities. All right, if the, the one, x plus 1 has a multiplicity of 2, x minus 6 has a multiplicity of 2, x has the multiplicity of 3. Now to find my degrees, I just think like this. It's going to be x squared times x squared times x cubed. Add up those x's. 2 plus 2 plus, plus 3 is x to the 7. So the degree of the equation is a 7. All right, writing the equation from a graph. This is getting a little more complicated, but you're just using the steps you've already done. Okay? Remember what the multiplicities mean. If it's a 1, that, might, that means it's just going through it. If, if the multiplicity is a 2, it's a bounce. And if the multiplicity is a 3, it's flattening. Okay? We'll show you examples. So first thing I want to do is find my 0. So look at where is it crossing that x-axis. This is where x is 1, where x is 0, and over here where x is negative 3. If I know those, I can write my factors that gave me those x values. Change the, take it the opposite sign. So x plus 3, x, and then x minus 1. Now, look at how is it touching the x-axis. Okay, this one's just going through it. It's not flattening. That means it must have a power of 1. This one is bouncing. Notice that it's bouncing. It's not actually crossing the x-axis here. It's um, bouncing off of it. So that must have an even power. So we don't know. We know this is even, so let's just hold on for that for a second. We know this is, this is definitely a 1 because it just goes through. This one, definitely a 1 as well because it's just curving through it. It's not flattening, it's just curving through. So this has a 1 as well. Now, notice what else it says here. It says make sure the degree is correct. Well, what does it say? The degree of this equation is a 4. That means when I add up all my powers of x's when I do my imaginary equation, when I multiply that out, it has to be a 4 right here. So what, remember, we just add the exponents across. So 1 plus 1 plus what gives me a 4? All right, add those exponents. Well, it would have to, and we know it's even. So start with a 2. If I put a 2 in here, 1 plus 2 plus 1, would that give me 4? Yep, sure would. So this is x squared. And I'm fine if you leave your equation like that. But start by finding the zeros, then read the multiplicity from the graph, determine the right number for that multiplicity based on how it's touching the x-axis, and then make sure your degree is correct, whatever they give you. Okay? Let's try another one of these. Determine the zeros first. Okay, this one is 1. This one is 1, and this one is 1 right here, okay? Let's determine our multiplicities, all right? These, this one is x is 3, and it looks like the multiplicity is just a 1 because it's just going straight through. This is, is x is a 0, and multiplicity is just a 1 as well. This one, x is negative 4, okay? And it kind of looks like it's laying flat on there, but really it's just curving. It's flattening. And so I picked that middle unit because that's where it's really flattening out. This is going through negative 4. And then look, it's not crossing the x-axis. It's flat. It's, it's a flat bounce, basically. It's a flat bounce, but it's a bounce all, nonetheless, which means it's an even power. Okay? It has to be an even power. Um, so let's look at this. Let's write our factors out that we know. We know x is negative 4, so this has to be x plus 4. x is 0, and then x is 3, so it's x minus 3. And we knew the multiplicities of 1 and 1. This goes here, okay? So now, again, it's the same idea that we did before. We know the ultimate power has to be, oops, has to be 6, x to the 6th power. And we have x to some degree times x to the first times x to the first. All right? So if we're adding these up across, they have to add up to 6. All right? So what, and we know that this is even, by the way. So if I put a 2 here, 2, 3, 4, that's not equal 6. So I know it's not 2. Go to the next even number. 4, 5, 6. <clears throat> a, a 2 didn't work, but it is a 4 work. 4, 5, 6, a 4 does work. 
So I know that the multiplicity is a 4. Again, it's bouncing off. And the same rule applies. The higher the even number, the flatter the bounce. So don't be surprised if you see that. You just need to recognize that it's not crossing the x-axis there. Okay? It's a skill, and you'll, you'll develop it as we go along. All right, on your own, I want you to find the zeros and the multiplicity of this equation. Okay? Try it, and we'll work on it in class tomorrow.